Hi, good morning everybody. How great to see you today. It is actually another great spring day. <laughs> Pretty much every day um, for me is a great day just because that's, that's a real focus of mine. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Rita Hickman. I'm a body mind expert and shiatsu massage therapist and my specialty is helping especially women figure out how to deal with the side effects and the symptoms of the crazy, overwhelming, insecure, out of control world that we're living in. So maybe those problems show up as fibromyalgia, maybe they show up as a heart condition, maybe they show up in your relationships uh, with fighting, maybe they show up as depression or an addiction to caffeine or an addiction to you know spending money. Hey Lisa, great to see you. So you know, the overwhelm that all of us are feeling and uh, experiencing, especially as women, is now getting way beyond, hey, Christine, way beyond our coping skills. Patty's here too. Very cool. You know, we as women have started to reach our limit. Hey, Doug. And a lot of men too, especially men who are connected into their sensitivity, their sensitive side. Hey, Anne Louise, great to see you who um, are more aware of what's going on around them. So actually when we talk about uh, women, we're talking about feminine energy, which uh, all people have. But as you've noticed, it's kind of started to go by the wayside. You know, we know a lot of women who don't tap into that, that, uh, that sensitivity and awareness of what's going on around them. And then of course, we've got a lot of masculinity that's out there and really um, making everything very polarized and linear and kind of crazy. So today I'm going to tell you uh, something that I picked up a long time ago. Hey, Carol, I picked it up a long time ago when I first started to get into um, Native American medicines, when I first started to study indigenous cultures and the traditions. You know, I loved it. I've always been involved uh, in some way, shape, or form. I first started to get involved in, in Native American uh, belief systems and cultures, uh, Mainly in college, I was looking for a couple of extra degrees <laughs> or a couple of extra classes that I needed. Hey, Jean-Pierre. And um, the school that I was going to offered a, uh, a Native American wisdom weekend. And uh, I said, well, I need the credits and this is right up my alley. And uh, so I went and that kind of started, even though I had an interest, that really started my journey into meeting uh, fabulous people from all over the world, cultures and ideas, indigenous cultures that have been passed down. Hey, Daniel, that have been passed down for, you know, thousands of years by this time. And uh, so Native American medicine has always really resonated with me. Hey, Deb. And one of the foundational pieces of, uh, of cultural medicines, of older medicines, are rituals are metaphors, you know, very sensory, you know, there's a sound, there's a smell, there's a, a ritual around it, there's a thought around it, very sensory dense. Because believe it or not, we as human beings are not all in our head. We like to think somehow that we're evolved and we're separate from our body, that our body doesn't actually have its own consciousness, that the world outside of us doesn't have its own consciousness, its own wants and desires and needs. You know, we don't realize that everything has a purpose. We're coming together and, and everything we interact with has its own purpose, its own um, road to follow or path to follow, what, what it needs to be doing. And even if it's not on a, on a mental conscious level, it's still, you know, every mitochondria in your body has a purpose to do, and it's going to be focused on that purpose. That's what it's there for. So when we start realizing that we are these full, sensual, multifaceted, you know, human beings, I mean, it's, it's crazy. You know, if, if we can look at a rock and evaluate a rock, you know, and say, oh, a rock does this. It's the qualities of the crystals or that. This is how it's formed. This is what it can be used for. We have no comprehension of what it's like to be a human being. Not really. Not really. Because we're only tapped into those two or three tablespoons of gray matter that we call our identity, ourselves. But in reality, 
we are as many older cultures knew because they didn't have microscopes and they didn't have probes you know to the bottom of the ocean they only had their observation just like asian medicine does too they only had their observation and a realization of what works and what doesn't and so they would come up with these highly effective multi-dimensional um, experiences rituals and ceremonies that would change the body because it changed how um, how we reacted to the world you know they knew these older cultures didn't have a lot of other things to depend upon they didn't have media and all that other stuff and so they knew that if they wanted to change how they felt they had to change how they how they thought how they engaged what their perspectives perceptions and perspectives were and um, so many years ago i ran across this great book on indigenous rituals and that got me thinking in a whole new direction this was probably like 12 years ago and they started to talk about how rituals are anything anything and everything you want them to be the whole purpose of a ritual is to move you in a direction that you want to go mentally physically and emotionally a ritual is designed hey jody to set you up for success it's designed to take all the consciousnesses that exist in you you know the stuff in your gut and your heart and your head and your skin and your mouth it's designed to take everything and set you up so that you'll be successful this is the purpose of rituals rituals are designed to override all of the uh ways that you sabotage yourself to override all of the negative thinking it's designed to override the laziness and the desire to protect ourselves and the hurt and the desire to fight or flee rituals um, are purposely designed experiences that keep us on the path that we know when we're in our you know when we're not running away from things in our rational mind we know we want to get to it helps us reach our goals so one of the ways one of the rituals that i uh, attached myself to quite a while ago was showers and rain water has such a powerful it's such a powerful metaphor it's associated with with emotions it's associated with dreaming it's associated with um, distraction and giving us a whole new experience with cleansing with getting rid of of the bad with nourishment water is critical and so to use something like rain it's going to talk to us it's going to talk to all of these parts of our body you know I, I was talking to um, a woman who runs a, uh, a print shop they do letterpress print which is a type of a uh, you know printing press it's a letterpress printing press and uh, so these things are big and they started talking about how we we're at breakfast because they were helping my dad my dad owns a printing museum and uh, they came down to help him with his sale and um, we're all talking at breakfast and they're talking about how the next generation that's coming up doesn't have good spatial recognition because everything that they learn is like in 2D on a screen of some sort. They watch videos, you know, uh, everything is 2D. And they're actually missing and lacking out uh, with the bigger, the, the bigger experiences that are involved with doing something. We think because we see it, we know it. But in reality, until you're in the middle of it, you don't know it. You don't know what it's like to, to feel everything coming at you. And this really made a point for me when I read about Holocaust survivors who said, you know, people feel very, very sorry for us. And this might not be everybody. This was, you know, an account. Um, they said, but in any situation, no matter what it is, there's always joy. So you can't know what someone else is truly experiencing until you're them or until you've come up with something close to what they've experienced. And it has to be multidimensional. So how does rain wash away your problems? Here's the deal. So this morning, I'm laying in bed, and we've got this mini big thunderstorm that's coming off. 
you know, I can hear a little bit of intermittent rain, and then you get the, the, um, the lightning, and then the thunder, and then we had a downpour. And the words and images that came up into my mind, and they have before, you know, when there's a good rainstorm, is that all of the troubles and all of the things I'm dealing with are washing away. I can handle this. So what the rain does is it talks to our hearing, it talks to our sight, it talks to our felt sense, it talks to these great metaphors, you know, that are tied into, so deep into our subconscious and our psyche that's been passed down for thousands of generations of nourishment, and nurturing, and life, and cleansing. You know, it taps into that, and it gets you out of whatever problems you're in, out of whatever fight or flight you're dealing with, and it brings you back into your rational, intuitive, higher self mind. It brings you back into that multidimensional person that you are. So when it rains, I want you to pause. And I want you to remember those metaphors. And remember how rain can affect you. And if you can, go out and touch the rain a little bit. Smell it. Engage with it. You don't have to go out and dance in the rain, although <laughs> totally guilty of that one. Done that a lot. But engage with it and experience it and let the rain wash these things away. Hey, Geneva, use it as a ritual. Use it as a very powerful symbol that will talk to you way past your conscious mind, that will get past that gatekeeper, past the person, you know, that, that this is who I am and this is how I work. It sneaks past all of that. These rituals, especially with really powerful symbolism, they sneak past your own sabotaging behavior. They get past all of it, and they speak to us on a level that is primal and primitive. So the next time it rains, maybe today if you're in our area, the next time it rains, I want you to pause and let the rain do whatever it's supposed to do for you. Maybe it's a gentle rain that soothes your soul and brings water to thirsty, parched areas. Maybe it's a hard, strong rain that washes away everything that's been bothering you, everything that's been controlling you and you've been obsessing about. Maybe it's a, an intermittent rain, something that's light and sprinkly, that brings you joy and makes your skin feel alive. Let yourself engage with the rain in a ritual way. Take a pause, take a moment, and let it do what it's supposed to do, which is to reset your button, to help take your problems away, even if it's just for a few moments, so that you can keep being the person that you know you want to be, but that you're probably not behaving like. <laughs> These rituals are designed to get you past your own um, issues and baggage and reactions. Mm -hmm. I love the rain too, Geneva. You love to sit on your porch and just watch it fall down. It is soothing. I'm so glad you needed this, Lisa. This is perfect. So no matter what the natural thing is, you know, no matter what it is, I like rain because it's so powerful, but it could be sunshine or shadow or a tree or a blade of grass or a flower, whatever it is, use something. Rain is good designed to get you back on the path you know you're meant to be on or to keep you on the path you know you're meant to be on because you are not your issues you are not your problems you are not your baggage you're not broken in any way shape or form this is the persona you've developed the reactions the protective stuff and when you can get back into that multi-dimensional intuitive higher mind you become the person that you're meant to be, not the person that's protecting and reacting and scared and angry or numb or checked out. That's not, that's a part of you, an important part of you, but that's not necessarily the highest version of you, the version of you that's able to problem solve and be present and love life to the highest degree, okay? So here's your homework assignment today. 
Take something, whether it be rain or sunshine or shadow or a tree or a blade of grass. Natural works best because it's been around for forever, right? Much longer than your car. <laughs> grass has been affecting people for thousands of years. You know, whereas, as you know, your little air freshener in your car has not. So pick something that has a primal, primitive aspect to it and take a pause and let it do what it's supposed to do, which is reconnect you and reset your button. Okay? Cool. So share, like, love this, be a part of the tribe, comment on each other's stuff because this is a safe place. This is a safe place to care and love and be present. So, you know, message me, send stuff out. And the more feedback I get, the more following I get, the more people engaging, the more I'm like, yes, this is needed and I'm going to keep doing this. You know, because I know how important it is that I get this wisdom out into the world and I act as an anchor for all of us who are struggling to, you know, keep moving forward. I'm fortunate enough that I can be that person. I've got enough blessings in my life. I've done tons of work on myself. So I'm so fortunate I can be that anchor. So I'm willing to be. And the more feedback, the more love, the more joy, the more everything that I get, um, it keeps me It keeps me in my intuitive higher self and out of my own uh, baggage. Okay? So have a great day. I hope you enjoy whatever it is today. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Oop, come on. It needs to finish. It's trying. <laughs> We're working on it. It'll finish in a second. Sorry if it's still recording. Uh, funny stuff. <laughs> I definitely need a new recording device. That's for sure.